you've probably heard of the X Prize. It's a global competition to solve big problems that haven't been solved before. The idea behind the competition is to crowdsource solutions to some of the world's biggest challenges. Right now, their biggest competition ever is open. The challenge is to remove carbon dioxide, CO2, from air, and the prize is $100 million. Climate science shows that adding 100 parts per million CO2 to the atmosphere over the last 100 years has caused global average temperature to warm by one degree Celsius, which is a big deal for a whole planet. We must dramatically lower CO2 emissions to slow the warming. Today, human activity is responsible for more than 35 gigatons, that's 35 billion tons, of carbon dioxide emissions every year. That's at least 16 times higher than all the municipal solid waste generated by all cities around the world. So why is this happening? Well, it's us and the energy we consume. Simply put, carbon dioxide is a waste byproduct of the way we live. Unlike solid garbage or dirty water, though, we don't see it, so it's easy to ignore. Carbon dioxide is a colorless, odorless gas that in most ways is completely harmless. We use it to make soft drinks fizzy or use it in fire extinguishers because it doesn't burn. What it does do is carbon dioxide traps heat from the sun by absorbing and re-emitting infrared energy. That's like the heat you feel from a rock on a sunny day. On the one hand, this is a good thing. Without some CO2 in the atmosphere, our average Earth temperature would be well below freezing. Right now, the problem is that CO2 levels are rising so fast that impacts like faster sea level rise and more storms, floods, and droughts are actually happening. I'm not saying this to be doom and gloom. I'm saying it so we can work on solving this wicked problem. For starters, there are many ways to tackle the climate change problem. Energy efficiency, renewable energy, and improved land use. But those won't decrease CO2 emissions fast enough. Climate science says that half the CO2 in today's atmosphere will still be there for another 100 years before it gradually gets absorbed by the ocean or enters the biosphere. Carbon capture, utilization, and storage, CCUS, is a way to help remove CO2 faster and it must be done at a massive scale, which is also a wicked problem. CCUS has three parts. Carbon capture is the process of separating CO2 gas molecules from other gases like nitrogen and oxygen. Utilization is finding value-added uses for captured CO2. But that's a lot of CO2 we're talking about. 35 billion tons every year. We don't make that much of anything else. So we also need to do the third thing, storage. The goal of CO2 storage is to permanently remove captured CO2 from the atmosphere. Here are three examples of how storage could work. Example one is the Sleipner project at a natural gas field off the coast of Norway. Raw natural gas drilled from under the seabed contains about 6% carbon dioxide, which must be removed. Instead of releasing the separated CO2 to the atmosphere, this project has been injecting 1 million tons per year of CO2 into a sandstone aquifer since 1996. No CO2 leaks have been detected for at least 10 years, and this site could store up to 600 billion tons. Example 2 is a project in Decatur, Illinois that's been capturing about half a million tons of CO2 per year since 2017 from the exhaust gas of ethanol fermentation. The CO2 is pumped underground and trapped in a geologic formation called the Mount Simon Sandstone. CO2 capture at Canada's Boundary Dam coal burning power plant is the third example. By March 2021, this first of its kind commercial scale project had captured 4 million metric tons of CO2 since starting in 2014. So CCUS is starting to become a reality, but there's a lot more work to do. 
That's why there's such a big X prize for carbon dioxide removal. It's really hard to do, but we have to. My research is on the carbon capture part. If you can't capture the CO2, you can't use it or store it. So far, the best way to capture CO2 from a power plant is called reactive absorption. This process uses chemically reactive liquids to separate CO2 molecules from other gas molecules and then concentrates the CO2 as a purified gas. Once carbon dioxide is purified, it's much easier to use and store. Reactive absorption occurs in a two-stage reactor that looks like a sideways figure eight. In the first stage, absorption, let's call that the left loop, a gas mixture containing CO2 comes in contact with a liquid and changes into a compound that dissolves really well. Other gases in the mixture, like nitrogen, don't react with the liquid and are released to the atmosphere. Next, CO2 trapped in the liquid is pumped into a second reactor. Imagine that as the right loop. This second desorption stage uses heat to change dissolved CO2 compounds back into CO2 gas. When it leaves the second stage, the CO2 is both pure and it's not in the atmosphere. It's trapped or captured in a pipe. Meanwhile, the liquid is pumped back to the first reactor where it repeats the cycle. Reactive absorption actually works. That's the good news. The bad news is equipment and energy costs for this process are too high to use it widely. If we could use water containing carbonate and bicarbonate salts, kind of like baking soda, to absorb CO2, these can release CO2 at lower temperatures. The problem is, this reaction would be too slow. Fortunately, nature has given us enzymes which can speed up this reaction. Enzymes carry out very specific reactions in the presence of other compounds, because they have special pockets in which only certain compounds can enter and react. In fact, some enzymes in your own body help you function like a CO2 absorber and desorber. CO2 made in your body is released from your lungs every time you breathe, and enzymes help that happen faster. If the enzyme can help do that in our bodies, what if we put this super-fast enzyme, called carbonic anhydrase, into an industrial CO2 capture system. Research has shown that it definitely helps speed up CO2 reactive absorption. Unfortunately, if enzymes travel with the liquid, they'll cook at the high desorber temperatures. To solve this problem, we could try to protein engineer the enzyme to make it more sturdy, and I collaborate with scientists who are really good at that. Another way is to hold the enzymes in the absorber column where the temperature is lower and the enzymes do most of their work. For this, you need some kind of packing material with high surface area. Instead of using normal metal packing materials, my team is developing a new kind of packing made from materials you come in contact with every day. Textiles. I use textiles because they're easily manufactured, lightweight, and have a very high surface area. They also have the right kind of chemistry to allow enzyme immobilization. With textiles, the liquid flows inside and through the packing, like wetting a washcloth. This can actually make CO2 absorption more efficient. My team is developing textile packings that can work really well together with enzymes. We're excited by the initial results and are scaling up some prototypes to test with our collaborators. Once we move from lab to bench scale, we'll have enough data to simulate how our technology would work with real flue gas from a real power plant. We want to use real flue gas because this gas contains a much higher concentration of CO2 than the atmosphere. But wouldn't it be great if we could run CCUS anywhere we wanted to? This would be possible if we could capture CO2 from air. Peter Diamandis, who founded the XPRIZE said, the day before something is truly a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. To win the XPRIZE, by 2025, teams need to show they can capture and store 1,000 tons of CO2 per year from air, show how it will be stored for 100 years, and make it more scalable, more sustainable, and cheaper than anyone else. 
our little lab reactor can capture CO2 from air. We just need to make it a million times bigger to have a chance at winning the X Prize, and then make a million of those to capture enough CO2 to help keep our world cool. Does this sound like a crazy idea? You just heard about my crazy idea. I can't wait to hear about yours.